Hello, welcome to the Sound of Science, the place where we deconstruct unscientific bogus and silly scams. Let's go get them. Hello, my fellow critical thinkers. Thank you for watching. Today, we will shed a light on the infamous Christian apologist, Frank Turek. It's unbelievable that a man who spouts so much nonsense has a YouTube following of 600,000 subscribers. Let's see what kind of rubbish Turek has in store for us today. I never said that atheists can't be moral. I never said atheists don't know morality. In fact, atheists know morality just like everybody else. We know morality because it's written on our hearts. What I'm saying is, is that atheists can't justify morality. That's the point. And that, of course, is total nonsense. I'm an atheist, and I've got morality, and I can perfectly justify it. I think the world would be a better place if there is less oppression, less war, less violence, etc. History shows that these atrocities cause unimaginable suffering, and I want to lead a life in which I contribute to reducing that suffering. That is my moral standard. I don't need a god for it, and I don't need atheism for it. In fact, I had to say this several times to Christopher Hitchens. Christopher, I'm not saying you're a bad guy. Christopher, I'm not saying you don't know morality. In fact, I like Christopher. I thought he was a good guy. What I'm saying is you can't justify why not murder innocent people to get what you want. This is one of the things about Turek that I really think is very low and very cheap. Turek refers to his conversations with the late and great Christopher Hitchens in a way that makes Turek himself look smart. And of course, Hitchens unfortunately died a long time ago, and he can't tell us anymore what his response was to Turek's rubbish. But anyway, more of the same nonsense from Turek. And I think Turek knows that his silly argument has been refuted a million times. Atheists do have morals, and they can justify them. But that morality just doesn't come from the atheist position, because atheism only is not believing the claim that a god exists. So, atheism has no position about morality. Just like the rules of chess do not include a position about morality. That doesn't mean that chess players can't justify their morality. They just get their morality from other sources than playing chess. Just like the Bible does not contain a recipe for lasagna. It doesn't mean Christians can't make lasagna. It just means that if they want to make lasagna, they just have to skip the Bible and buy a cookbook. Turek keeps repeating his lie that atheists can't justify their morality over and over again. And it's hard to imagine that he doesn't know that this is a lie. Well, in the next part, Turek is elaborating on the origin of the universe and how, according to him, there must be a god who created the universe. Turek keeps repeating that there must be a first uncaused cause that brought the universe into existence. Let's listen. That we have two options here. Either the universe is the uncaused first cause or something beyond the universe is the uncaused first cause. Well, I don't agree, because yet again, Frank Turek is talking nonsense here. What first uncaused cause? Why would there be such a thing? Option three, of course, is a first uncaused cause does not exist. Maybe the universe is an endless chain of causes that never stops. And of course, there is option four. Maybe the universe coming into existence was the uncaused cause. Since Turek thinks that an uncaused cause can exist, he doesn't even need a guard for his explanation. The universe itself could be that uncaused cause that he so desperately wants to sell us. No god needed. And maybe there are many more explanations for the origin of the universe. But of course, one of the main tricks that Turek is using is pushing his audience and critics into false dilemmas. Turek is falsely suggesting that there are only two options, which of course is nonsense. Edwin Hubble d detected that back in 1929 and shows that everything came from a single point. A point actually of infinite density, the singularity, which is actually nothing. So the universe had a beginning. And another lie. The singularity is not 
nothing is the point in which all the energy of the universe was concentrated at the moment of the Big Bang. It certainly was not nothing. This has been explained to Turek multiple times, but he keeps repeating this nonsense. You don't have to worship God. So you don't have to worship the unmoved mover. You don't have to. You can do whatever you want. That's why you have free will. Ah, there we go again. The free will bogus. Turek knows this is nonsense, but he keeps repeating it. That is how he makes his money, by breeding new generations of gullible believers who accept this nonsense. No, God did not give us free will. Free will cannot be given. It can only be taken away. In a world without God, I can worship who I want, I can eat what I want, I can love who I want and think of my parents what I want. But then the Christian God steps in, telling me what to do and what not to do. And if I don't obey him, he will send me to a place that he specifically created to punish me for not obeying him. God doesn't give us free will. He severely limits our free will with all his threats and commands and the choices he forces upon us. According to the Bible, the God character even took away the free will to live of millions of people by deliberately and slowly drowning them in a planned and systematic manner. Just read the Genesis chapter. God giving us free will is total nonsense. He takes it away from us. He should just cut his threats and leave us alone. God loves you enough to give you free will. You can love him or reject him, that's up to you. And again, another false dilemma. You can love God or reject him. No, utter nonsense. If I don't love someone, it doesn't mean that I reject them. That is another false dilemma that Turek and his God force upon us. If this God character would finally show himself in a way that actually proves his existence. Can't I just ignore him instead of loving or rejecting him? If there is free will, why shouldn't that be an option, just ignoring this God character? Well, let me back up for a second. There's only two possibilities if God exists. In eternity, you're going to be with him or you're not going to be with him, right? That's logically the only two options. No, that's not the only two options. If there is a God, and there's no good reason to believe such a thing, but if there is a God, then that doesn't mean that eternal life exists. That is yet another unproven assumption. If you want to be with him, you will seek him out and be with him. If you don't want to be with him, God will not force you into his presence against your will. Really? If I don't want to be in God's presence, he will force me to spend eternity in hell. That is not a free choice. That is extortion, mafia style. Love me and be with me or I will torture you forever. A loving God would never do such a thing. And why does God again restrict my free will? Why isn't there a third option? For example, living in eternity without God's presence but just in a nice and quiet place where God doesn't bother me. Why is that option not available? Only a mad dictator would create a system in which I must worship him or otherwise I will burn for eternity. A concept like that can only be conceived by an insane maniac. So you're free in hell. You can continue to reject God in hell but you're confined to hell. In fact, hell is a quarantine of evil. That's what it is. Again, this narrative shows the despicable morals of Christian apologists like Frank Turek. It's another implicit threat, forcing his gullible believers to stay within the Christian cult. Because if they will turn their back on this God character, they will be punished. Turek says that if we reject his God, we are evil and we will end up in hell among the other evil people who have the guts to stand up and refuse to be a slave to his God. So apparently that's the faith of 5 billion people who do not worship the same God as Turek. And Turek is gladly promoting this hateful nonsense as long as he can make money from it. It's totally despicable and it makes me sick. By the way, you could make me feel better by subscribing to my channel. And if you don't, 
There is no punishment. If you don't love me, I won't send you to hell. I won't lock you up with evil folks. I won't let you burn in the lakes of fire. Because contrary to the Christian God, I give you real free will. I don't force you into any choice. Because that would be totally immoral. Hey, thanks for watching.